Like, I don't even, like, and, and, and when you listen to that, if you say to yourself, you know what, I thought I wanted to be a rapper, I just want to be an artist, <laughs> I, I respect it. Because you hear that and you're like, I can't do that. I don't right. know how that right. happened. I can't do that. I, my vocabulary's not that big. Right. Boom. I, I'm just, you know what? I'm going to just do a little song. I'm going to kind of sing instead. Let me just go ahead and sing and auto-tune this out, baby. <laughs> I get just, it. I let get me just auto-tune this up, baby, and get to the, try to get to this bag and meet some girls. Speaking of the uh, of the music and, and, how it should, and how it makes you feel, I got a, um, I got a DM from a, a friend of the show yesterday mm. who said... Um, she was like, yo, Rosenberg, I just got to let you know, I hear it when you guys have been talking about this battle recently. She's like, I, I hear you going through the motions. I can just hear your heart. She was like, you used to have like such excitement when you talked about things about rap. She's like, I can see you kind of like working through it. And I was like, oh, man, mm. she's right. No passion. Well, so I hit Rosenberg with the button. I wouldn't say no passion. Congratulations. I wouldn't say no passion. I would just say, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. it. Feels it doesn't feel doesn't feel real to me. Something about it ain't real. Well, you, well, the the lack of realness, like you mean, you think this is all a work? Is what you think, or you just like it's based in nothing? Like what what are you guys competing for? What's the actual competition for? Where, all, where all, you... all of it, all of it. The 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 that part. I don't like believe what it's. Re I mean, listen. I believe Kendrick has some real things he feels about Drake and wanted to get them off. And I think that Drake probably has some real feelings around. I, I believe there are real feelings there, mm -hmm. but there's something about the whole delivery of it all and the way that we're consuming it and the everyday social media of it and the amount of voices weighing in. When you think about the players involved, that the whole thing is just like, uh, it well, makes me want to cool, puke. Yeah, yeah, it's just that. Uh, yeah. The tough, the tough. You, you feel me, me, right? One hundred percent. I mean. It was exciting when you heard Kendrick jump in, but the first person out of the gate after that apologized in two days. Yeah, that wasn't great. Yeah, I guess in retrospect, that's also not a great start for the battle. That just that's not a great followed start. Followed by followed by Drake jumping in and sampling DJ Academics. Like everything about it and is kind of like taking my academics is hip hop now. What you talking yeah, about? This is, this is great. What are you talking about? Like? Academics is where hip hop's at. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop hasn't been this excited in a minute, bro. That's a quote of know, things going, going on. <laughs> so Rosie, I'm not the least it. excited for Kendrick versus. And there's, oh, and there's right. actual bars. There's no singing and auto tune happening. Come nah, on, man. I know. Excited about this. No, I, but listen, you know what? I feel Rosenberg. True. I feel Rosenberg. I feel everybody. But I, I want to point out, you know, for me personally, there's been plenty of opportunities for the greatest artists that we see right now, the biggest, not greatest, excuse me, the biggest artist that we see right now, Drake, to do things that are quintessentially hip-hop and really feed hip-hop and, and do like, you know, what the hip-hop, core hip-hop fans want, which is like a classic barred up album from Drake and he doesn't want to go about doing things that way. There's also the Ghost Rider stuff and you know I think the other behind the scenes stuff that's frustrated a lot of people over time. But Kendrick Lamar at every turn has tried to make his brand, his albums and what he does very thought provoking, very thoughtful, very smart hip hop. Like, leaning in on what we were just talking about with Nas and Illmatic. At every but, turn. Mm -hmm. and even, also, even, and wait, hang on. And even the musicality of what he's doing. Bringing in jazz musicians. And bringing in, like, real musicians. And sampling those musicians. And turning that into original bodies of work. Etc, etc, etc. So if I'm Kendrick, I'm definitely frustrated with someone like Drake. Well, hold and on, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. So I get that. Drake's response to that has been just to talk about his record deal, right? His lack of height, his shoe size, <laughs> right? And the fact and the that fact he's... that he's affiliated with you know people who are you know street type bosses. His well, no your, your, go ahead. Kendrick, go ahead hasn't set, Kendrick hasn't said all of that. That's number one because he the way we came back on first person shooter was really. Just bragging rap also. Well, no, and, I'm saying and, what he feels inside. The reason he has yeah. a, an issue with Drake and what so Drake we, so we think well, So we think. Well, maybe, but we don't know. Yeah, so we think because he hasn't, he hasn't expressed it. And to be honest, Drake 
people that listen to Drake don't want that from Drake because Drake's for all the dogs. The second part was that. Yeah, and I and, liked it. And nobody, they didn't want I loved scary it too. Hours. The scary nobody hours wanted. Deluxe. Nobody. Yeah, wanted. And, and they didn't want it. So, but how, how about this? Nobody wants that type of hip hop. And, and I'm. Uh, by the way, I am. Uh, I am. Uh, this is a uh, an overstatement, an oversimplification. Uh, right. When I say nobody wants it, because it does right. exist, but it doesn't get popular. There's not a large audience trying to consume barred up, you know, uh, boom bappy leaning, thought provoking, you know, purposeful hip hop, which is why people run around and call um, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers a brick. Or J. Cole called it tragic or whatever. It's because it was musical, thoughtful, lyrical, you know, something you had to listen to and pay attention to. And so if you're mad at the state of hip hop at any point, you just got to understand that hip hop got so big and so popular that the, the type of hip hop that gets put out is stuff that can reach and I'm using air quotes here, the masses. And, you know, we could be mad at the people making it or we could be mad at ourselves who claim to love hip-hop but don't run out and consume it the way it should be consumed though, so that more people want to make the stuff that's thought-provoking. So hit us all with the button. Congratulations. You played yourself. I, but... N- I don't. None of this really had anything to do with Kendrick. No, no. no. Do, uh, I mean, like, you, obviously, I, honestly, I, I liked what Kendrick even said. And Kendrick's probably going to play this out the way an old school thing would play out. He probably won't do anything until it's time for his album or until something makes sense, and then he'll drop. It's it's kind of all the accoutrement around it that makes me feel rip it, uh, just it just all the AI crap, not knowing it's if Laura. Real or not. I know Laura. It's the AI. I it's see, the yeah, no, so it's the commentary on social media, bro. Like it's the literally every time you open up your account, you'll get fed like TikTok think pieces from nineteen year olds breaking down <laughs> stuff with no context of hip hop whatsoever. They only have context of like Drake and Kendrick and this world. There's no real historical anything. Like the only place where to me there's a tolerable conversation about this is is here. Well, you're biased. Because yeah, those 19-year-olds right. on TikTok, they have something to say, and they deserve a voice, and everyone deserves to contribute. Everyone Rosenberg. deserves a voice. Everyone thank, deserves a trophy. Thank you, social media. Everyone should be able to weigh yourself. in. Rosenberg, like, you were that 19-year-old once, except Yeah, and guess what? And, and you know and what? I'm glad you're saying that. shut his bum ass up. You're a you college radio <laughs> for a second. Exa- exactly. And so just to be clear, because there are people listening going, yeah, but I remember when you got here, and I felt like, and you're absolutely right, there are people who felt that way. Just so you know, though, even at 27 when I got here, 27, I was on like my fourth radio job. Had had been had played in empty rooms. Had done all of the requisite work to to hopefully earn a chance to get to prove myself to my peers. There is no proving yourself to your peers. There's hoping that you find an algorithm that decides we should feed you to other people. Well, that's your so peers, they. Ha- your peers are just other idiots? That's right. And the algorithm. You play <laughs> and the algorithm, it's great. Algorithm. So, yeah, I just. So, it's not Al-Gor- even a dish. Al Gore's rhythm is your peer. Al Gore's rhythm? I never heard that. <laughs> did you just make that up? No, I've said it before. Nobody cared the last few Did you? Did you? Is it a, but honestly, you should be proud of it. Is that a you thing? You came up with Al Gore rhythm? I have no idea. I really don't know where I got it from. Well, it's pretty good because he, if, if he, he reported the, the event of the internet. It's yeah. Al Gore's rhythm. By the way, by the way, I'm just trying to distract from the real news of last night, which was that Israel fired missiles at Iran, and it sent me into a place of. I haven't been unhinged like that. Yo, I feel bad, Natalie. Were you pacing saw me in like your that. apartment? Yes, and Natalie walked in, and she didn't know yet. And when she saw me, I was like, "Hey!" And she like gave me like a happy. <sighs> she gave me like a happy kiss, hello. I was like, "You didn't check your text." She was like, "I just went right into." I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I was over. I was. I was. Bruh. I was, he wants. We want. He wants us to oh, die. No. He wants world war. This is it. Let's pack it up. I was. I. I was not in a great place, guys. I woke up and the world was still here. So I guess I feel a little bit better. But uh, well, these I things play out. These things play out over a long period of time, generally speaking. So you know. But here's. Here, um, can I just head on a swivel? Mm. So I'm keeping my head on a swivel, and I really, I, I know we don't have a half hour here to go start 
20 years ago. So I just want to start on April 1st, okay? The congratulations just on April 1st. I'm not even going to talk about the horrible atrocities in Gaza. I'm going to start right now on, right now. April 1st, Israel hits, whether intentionally or unintentionally, hits an Iranian embassy in Damascus, okay? Ten days Ooh, later. Did anybody ever say it was unintentional? I don't know. I, I, I'm just oh. not pretending to know any more about it. I just okay. I don't want to. Or it was targeted, maybe. I, I don't know. They they take out an embassy in, in Damascus of Iran. Ten days later, Iran goes, all right, well, we can't let that stand. So after Ramadan ends, Iran, who, by the way, we don't want problems with. And when I say we, I mean the U.S., everyone on this show, everybody listening, don't want problems with. Nope. They say, we're going to respond. The respond they come with is very deliberate and telegraphed and basically completely ineffective. Everything gets taken out. And, and also, it should be noted that it was a response that was kind of like, look, we have to respond, which is why That's what we're I'm letting saying. everyone yeah. see what's happening. And we don't want this to go any further either. Right. Like, but, but we have to respond because you did something. And so now we have to. So we're letting you know. We're letting you know. But I'm not trying to paint Iran as a good guy. I'm just explaining, though, they were not trying to go to war in that moment. It was a, hey, let's respond. Nothing really happens. One, unfortunately, child was severely injured. That, that, that was literally it. Like, there was no other casualties. So after that happens, Biden and other world leaders go, hey, Israel, let's just, that was it. You hit them. They hit you. Nothing really happened. We're, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up because we can't. We will not support you. As much as we support you, we will not support war with Iran. Several days passed. And then last night, the news comes out that Israel has decided to send missiles towards Iran. And I, I, I cannot wait to hear what Joe Biden has to say today. Well, because he should if my get man up there comes out soft say, again today, well, I, first, Ebro, I, I, listen, I don't know if I could take it. Cool, Many in the Congress have been saying, hey, stop sending Israel weapons. Now, that's not a part of the agreement. So clearly, you know, the United States has a standing agreement with Israel. But uh, if Biden gets up there and says anything other than LL Cool J, I, and congratulations, I played myself. Congratulations. Um, the you world's coming from because, because we keep sending them. We keep sending them military aid. The other thing that people should um, point out is... It's in Israel's interest and Netanyahu specifically and his relationship with Trump, conservatives, the Christian right and all of that to keep this chaos going. This is what people who support Netanyahu want. It did, but but Trump wants him in war. Well, war helps Trump's bid for the office. Oh, got it. Because I was going to say Trump's not. I don't think really about them going no, to no, war. No, no. Yeah. Trump, it helps well, Trump was definitely about moving that embassy to Jerusalem and exacerbating well, yeah, the issues course. over there and with Kushner and all of that. It was definitely yeah, with all more, of that. But no, it's actually kind of more the opposite. The chaos of the war, then he can come in and go, oh, what we need to do is we need someone who can end this. That's I right. I can be the one. That's right. I'll say, BB's my friend. He doesn't respect Biden. He respects me. That's I'll say, right. By the way, that part's true. Yes. Because I'll tell you one thing that's in Yahoo doesn't do is respect Biden. He is literally sunning you on a public stage. You literally could get up there right now and go, hey, you know that Iron Dome that we funded that's saving you right now? Hey, here's the deal. Um, nothing more for you. And in fact, there'll be nothing more for Israel until Netanyahu's out of office. Y'all better work it out. We're not doing this They're anymore. Not brave enough. Matter of fact, if you think Biden and the U.S. and the Congress is brave enough to do that with the amount of funding that they get from the APAX and all of these other uh, pro-Israel well, lobbies, hit, hit this button. Congratulations. I just don't. I, I don't. Song. I don't understand it. Cool, Jay. Money or not, uh, so is it is going to be worth World War? I mean, that's the, we're, these are the kind of conversations we're talking about, step by step here. So hit us all with the button. I don't know who to hit with the button. Everybody. Congratulations.